1984 was not an overly exciting year in the domestic auto industry, but General Motors did have two very significant launches that year. The first was the return of the Corvette after a one-year hiatus, and the C4 represented a dramatic departure from the C3 that it replaced, which had run from 1968 to 1982. The other prominent launch for the 1984 model year came from Pontiac Division, and it was called the Fiero. It was originally dubbed the Pegasus, hence its logo. The Fiero was sold to General Motors Management as a commuter car and as a way for the corporation to partially meet its CAFE regulations or corporate average fuel economy standards. But the exterior and interior styling teams did such a good job at making this little mid-engine vehicle a great looker that buyers expected it to be more sporty than grocery getter alone. One individual who led the design of the Fiero's interior was Marv Fisher, who was initially working in an advanced interior studio, but later transferred to Pontiac Interior Studio as its assistant chief designer. Marv conceived the Fiero's interior with a key element being a wraparound instrument panel with a driver's cluster that pulled away from the IP and came relatively close to the steering wheel, enabling a driver to activate buttons on the cluster pod easily without moving his or her hands very far off of the wheel. Marv sat down with us to discuss some of the design elements he and the team considered when the Fiero interior was conceived and as it made it through to production. Let's welcome back Marv Fisher to Rare Classic Cars and listen in. All right, well, welcome back to Rare Classic Cars. Here again with Marv Fisher, the, uh, well, the, our esteemed interior design colleague, to talk about a car that I think uh, a lot of viewers really love and own, and I personally owned, and that's the Pontiac Fiero. And maybe Marv, just this is such an iconic car in Pontiac history, and also a bit of a tragic one because it was, you know, successful to start, and I think a lot of people ended up loving it. Certainly, a lot of collectors do, and they were going to continue the lineup, and it kind of similar to what GM did with other vehicles at the time. Once they got it right, they cancel it, and um, but it certainly made a mark on automotive history. Mm-hmm. What was the thought process? And tell us a little bit about when you came into the studio, what the discussion was on this particular car. Well, uh, here, here again, they uh, wanted to put a, uh, a team together that they felt that could capture, you know, a new sportiness and that type of thing. And it was just happened to be... Uh, a part of my career path that I was a little bit younger, just coming on in stream and that type of thing. So they, I was in uh, Chevy Interior uh, too, uh, worked on uh, some subtle changes on the Corvette, but nothing big there. And then we uh, transferred down to uh, in an advanced studio and uh, with a couple other uh, more uh, mature or experienced uh, designers that were s- kind of sporting. But I got to feel afterwards, or uh, as the process went along, that they were expecting me to step up and kind of kind of lead lead the thing. Mm. And uh, Event Studio was uh, kind of unique because we didn't have a lot of clay modelers there, and one of the individuals was so good modeling up styrofoam and getting curved to it and whatnot that he actually did it out of uh, styrofoam and uh, uh, and uh, I'd like to give him a lot of credit for doing that as well but uh, certainly the driving thing here was the fact that the engine was in the rear of the car and, mm-hmm. and, and not forward so that really gave uh, some different uh, dynamics to the front so the the front of passenger side could go a little bit further forward than uh, normal, which then meant that the uh, the driver side or the cluster side and the controls then would be coming uh, back. And that was another one of my theories was to get the controls as close as possible and convenient as possible. Mm. So then the dynamics of the, the right side versus the left side, you know, played a big part of it. But the engineers did a good job and used that space uh, quite well. I never would have thought, to your point, that the the mid-engine nature of the car it really influences the instrument panel and the and the shape. But it, it clearly oh, oh, did. Oh yes, it does. It's 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 a big big thing. 
So you're able to push the IP structure forward on the passenger side to get more uh, space. Yeah, right. And then on the driver side, your kind of your theme of getting the controls close to the driver, you yeah. created those pods. And, 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 and the pods weren't that big, so they didn't get in your way mm. of your, your your knees and your legs and that type of thing. Wow. What was the original know. discussion on some of these themes? I noticed in some of your earlier artwork, there's that a bit of that modular theme, too, to the advanced Well, I, I did. You, usually, you start art started out and it's a little bit more advanced and and of course they they can't quite handle you know some <laughs> of those advanced stuff so then you constantly have to back off a little bit and refine it and whatnot and the same thing happened when it came out of the advanced studio uh and it got back up into the production studio and there was a new studio head up there that was working with it and he had a, a, a his own vision of you know some of the forms and shapes you know, having smoother contours and that type of thing. So, so it took on a little different feel as it moved up. Oh, so depending upon the group that you're working with, the, the theme took on a bit different, right? You know, yeah. look to it. Yeah. I do notice that the the air vents and how they protrude continued from your original advanced mm -hmm. work. Right. So, I guess it's functional that they're out there where. They can blow on you a little bit, or you can reach them to change them. Uh, oh, that, that, that makes that, sense. That type of thing. On the passenger side, because the IP is so far forward, if you put the vent in the same plane, you yeah. wouldn't, couldn't reach it probably. Right. And it's all also the, uh, the, the, the dynamics of it, trying to get it to flow and to wrap around. Well, that, mm. that was part of it. Now, I noticed in some of these early seating bucks, you're kind of forced into using the corporate HVAC and radio controls, but you've got a little different theme. This has the push buttons, where as opposed to the slider bar, this you push it to activate oh, okay. it. Okay. And then the damper door was electric electrically activated, so it's a little bit different. Yeah, I think they gave you a little bit of freedom to, uh, to alter some of those things. It didn't have to be a corporate part, and uh, you, you can modify it because I don't think some of those things are too expensive to uh, achieve. Hmm. No, I don't think so. And, uh, you know, we, we originally uh, felt that we wanted some gauges up high there to be a little bit sporty or whatnot, but that got to be too much, so we backed away from that. Hmm. In the, and I think uh, on some of the GTs, this gauge pod came back, but it is missing. It's funny, you, you have a turbo boost gauge on there. The right. car never got a okay. turbocharged engine. Okay. Maybe you were you, wishful thinking, I guess. Maybe. But you do, I think one thing that's interesting in the Fiero work, as well as some of your other work for Pontiac, there's almost like a theme on st uh, the stereo and the sound. And uh, the, here, there's a subwoofer meter. And later, mm -hmm. some Pontiacs had a dynamic control in the car that you could adjust um, the bass uh, overall and how the, the, sound, uh, the sound of the radio. Was that one of the things that the studio team really was passionate about? Or? Well, I, I think it's probably more uh, an engineering, uh, you know, influence, trying to get in there and, and contribute, mm. you know, which is fine. Got it. Which is fine. Now, in terms of the seating, did you find any challenges with this type of package arrangement to get the seating mm -hmm. correct? Or? Well, I, I think we found that we did probably a little bit more lateral support than we would normally do, being more of a sport car and uh, whatever, so lateral support and, and uh, you and uh, fooling around with uh, some of the fabrics and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you mention that because this one yeah. made it through to production. This yeah. particular fabric, so it kind of gives me a, a, a western feel to it. Uh, was uh, that mid, was mid, that you? Mid, you wanted to put that in there? Uh, I'm not totally sure. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a playful western theme, I guess. Yeah. And I notice this uh, this door pull, if you will, later became a mm -hmm. handle. Is that, I think, in Pontiac for a while, they were really big on that handle almost being a mm -hmm. character theme. They had to help close the door and reach it and to pull it back inside and whatnot. 
From there, I was probably trying to get more of a flow, a horizontal theme, and uh, some of wanted to do a more of a vertical, maybe more functional. Oh, uh, so you wanted this thing. pole to kind of have yeah, reinforced wrap around, and uh, so you you could grab it, uh, you know. Uh, and, and, and different areas depending on your stature and your arm length. Oh, so it's, I see the pull's so long that it enables a short person who's got the seat up to close effectively. Exactly. You know, it, it seemed to me uh, to be a little more functional, more very uh, wow. on it there. So, you know, some of this stuff I think maybe happened maybe a year or so later. Yeah. Right. The, 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 different uh, characters and whatnot. And that's a big, uh, was that a big consideration, particularly in this car, you know, just making sure that with the sporty package that you've got enough mm -hmm. sight line through the glass, and I'm sure that's a, a consideration on all the vehicles that you have to do. But yeah, right. How do, what do you have to think about when you're trying to design an interior like this? What are some of those considerations that you're really thinking about? Mm -hmm. Well, we, we had some good support with uh, some engineers when I first started, uh, you know, design work there, and that was before there was uh, computers, and and, uh, and w they had actually engineers come in there and set up their tripods and directional a elements there, checking angles oh. of, on the actual design to make sure you could see all your warning lights and so forth. So, but of course they. They improved over that with uh, the technology and the computer version there, so we didn't have to struggle uh, too much there because somebody was there, you know, checking and making sure that everything ah. was okay. But you you can see here the the dynamics of the instrument panel being so far forward here, and then the uh, the cluster here uh, staying back and within reach of the uh, steering thing. But it didn't want to be too big, otherwise, you know, you're going to obstruct knees and, and what have you. So there's quite a bit of dynamics going on there, for, mm. oh, fore and aft. Interesting. There. And I noticed this looks like it's a later one, because this, this also made it through to production, this kind of stripe in the right. fabric, and you see the, the different door handle here and a mm -hmm. pouch for, you know, your map pocket. Or right. Now, what's interesting though, Marv, is it looks like there's another little cutout here in this door pole. That didn't make it through to production. Okay. Probably somebody told you that cost too much. You just have to stick yeah, with it. Yeah, well, one's enough. Right? One's well, enough? Yeah. <laughs> I wonder, is that something that, you know, perhaps to your point on the, the pole, the longitudinal pole, enabling short and tall drivers? Uh, I'm sure it, it was, because if you open the door too far, then Can't you'll, get you, it. you'll find that this one was easier to reach than the other one. So for anybody who's got a Fiero yeah. and you can't reach the door when it's open, uh, yeah. you were trying your best, but somehow it didn't make it through. Well, maybe it's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got, this one's one of my favorites too, that you've got a, a sketch from, this is dated uh, September of 1980, so pretty early on. And this is back, uh, some of the viewers may or may not Recognize, but mm -hmm. Pontiac was going through this alphanumeric phase, the J2000, which later became the Sunbird, mm -hmm. the 6000, and then the Fiero was the P car. It was going to be the P3000, but this is, a, this is a sketch that doesn't only show the seating pattern, has some other uh, ancillary elements too, Marv. And, and that's quite, quite interesting <laughs> 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 because it was during this time here that uh, I was looking to get married oh. and, uh, and, and, and and some studios I had a little bit more time and uh, I was able to you know express myself and my, <laughs> in, my interests at that point. <laughs> so is there anything as you think back on the Fiero program in the interior anything that you were really pushing for that it didn't make it through or something you're especially proud of that that did. I mean, the overall theme was quite radical for the, the time. But well, I, I think it was fairly successful in getting that cluster pod to come out mm. and be its own element, and then the rest of the panel uh, step back. So, you know, that, that, that's the main uh, success story. 
uh, um, you know, on that as, as well. Great. Well, thanks so much, Marv, for talking about really a seminal car in automotive history. And uh, you know, you and your team played quite the pivotal role in the interior. So. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, thanks again, Marv. Bye.